Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. 13 new members joined the City Council this year. That's far less than the 35 expected before they changed term limits, but still that's a big change for that body. And I sense we'll see the influence of these 13 newcomers very soon. One of the new energetic stars is Jimmy Van Bramer. He represents the 26th district, which includes Woodside, Sunnyside, Long Island City, Astoria, and Maspeth. It's Queens. Welcome, Jay. <laughs> Thank Jimmy. you for having me. <laughs> How do you like being in the council? I love being a council member. <laughs> do you love it? Why? Uh, it's a great opportunity to serve uh, my neighborhood, uh, yeah. the place I've uh, lived in all my life and went to school at, and the fact that I would be in a position to be able to advocate on behalf of my neighborhood is a great thing. It's, I went. I was born in my neighborhood and always lived within the neighborhood I represented, and I think it's, it's, it is. It's a great base for your, your going on. You know the stores that were there before the stores sure. that were there before, right? Absolutely. Has it changed a lot, the neighborhood, since you were of young? Of course. I mean, I think all no. of Queens has yeah. changed. Uh, it's become much more ethnically diverse. Uh, everyone talks about how diverse Queens is today, and of course it has, and I think uh, I, I'm 40 years old. I have actually been able to witness uh, some of that myself, so it's it's just had amazing transformation How in terms it of its population. What was it when you grew up? Uh, I think that the uh, Hispanic influx, of course, has just increased uh, uh, that population exponentially uh, since I was a kid. Uh, many of those neighborhoods, you know, were mm -hmm. older Irish, mm -hmm. Italian, uh, Greek um, neighborhoods, and I think it's also uh, much more diverse in terms of uh, uh, economics. I think that there were a lot of more working class families um, who uh, were living in the neighborhoods. And now I think, particularly in the Long Island City section of my district, uh, you know, we see a lot more middle class, upper middle class um, residents and uh, in parts of, of Sunnyside as well. Are they, are they families or mostly single people or young people? I think it's a mix. It's a mix. I, I think it's a mix, but I think there are a lot of families. Uh, Long Island City, as you know, uh, has changed uh, incredibly and it's a great neighborhood and uh, with the park along the waterfront mm, and, and now with Manhattan skyline. It's right? beautiful. Yeah. It's the best view uh, uh, for half the price and uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, really attracting a lot of families who I think really want to settle down uh, and good. live in that neighborhood. Do you have enough schools? We do enough not. Uh, we do not. Uh, absolutely. Particularly there. I mean all over the district. Yeah. Uh, but particularly in Long Island City, where we are also expecting 5,000 more units to come online with Hunters Point South. And currently all we have is a PS78, uh, which is a relatively small school, and uh, that's simply not enough. So and there the is developers don't have to provide the <coughs> framework for a school? Uh, I wish that kind of planning and, and foresight had been uh, always yeah, there. in place, but uh, it wasn't. Now there is uh, another school currently uh, in the works uh, that's hopefully uh, just two years away and then for Hunters Point South there'll be another school. And what about the transportation? That's an issue that you're very interested in, right? Yes. Well, I, I mean the 7 train is uh, really the heartbeat of uh, all of Queens, you right. know, from Long Island yeah. City to Flushing. And, and certainly in my district, Long Island City, Sunnyside, Woodside, uh, it's for most people the only line. Uh, if you live in parts of uh, the district, you could get to the, uh, the R uh, train mm -hmm. along Broadway, but for the most part, that's your line. And unfortunately, uh, the 7 train uh, is often too crowded in the morning to get on. And then with what's... you're the last stop before Manhattan. Correct. And then what's recently sort of been in the news is the weekend closures, which have been repeated year after year after year as necessary track work goes on, but the MTA uh, has not been giving us advance notice and also not providing a meaningful alternative in terms of a, a shuttle into and out of Grand Central. So uh, we did a lot of great advocacy on that issue as soon as I came in office and uh, happy to report that the work was uh, shut down a month in advance of what it was planned for. So I think that was an important victory. So you're a community organizer by experience. Absolutely. Right? You were born a community <laughs> organizer? <laughs> well, you know, my parents uh, are both union members. And, uh, so you were. <laughs> absolutely. My father was uh, 
an organizer for Local 2. He was a pressman for the New York Times. And um, my mom worked at various supermarkets in the neighborhoods. So yeah, I've always been an organizer. <coughs> I uh, organized the first lesbian and gay uh, organization at St. John's University when I was a student there. Uh, I was co-president of the Sociology Club, where we had lots of really interesting, interesting. discussions. <laughs> and, uh, and then I went to work as an organizer for Clean Money, Clean Elections. You know, a very mm -hmm. important campaign mm -hmm. finance initiative in 1998, and then uh, for 11 years organized on behalf of public libraries. That's how I met you. When That's you used right. To come and testify to the budget committee and all the finance committee. That's right. Um, so you're going to need to do a lot of that organizing. I, who was it? Is it the state senator Espada? Who did I hear him say that he wants to raise, put back the issue of tolls on the bridges? Oh, did he? I don't know. I think it was he. I'm not sure. Uh, but as we look at the state budget and sure. the deficit, that's obviously going to come up. What do you think about that? Uh, I think that <laughs> is uh, one of the things that people talk about as uh, uh, you know, a source of generating revenue. Um, I think anything that, that discourages uh, 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 automobile traffic in our city is, is something that uh, is important to, to take a look at. And uh, obviously we want to generate revenue. I do think, though, people need to be sensitive that uh, folks in, in Queens in particular and other out of boroughs, um, you know, sometimes feel like these kinds of initiatives don't give us the attention uh, yeah. that we deserve and, and, and will, you know, disproportionately negatively affect people living in Queens. It also has to come with massive improvements in mass transportation. I mean, right. you can't really offer, take, take away one thing and not offer something else. Right, right. And I think, you know, one of the things that we don't want and what we already see, parking is a huge issue in, in Western Queens because a lot of people are driving out mm. east, from out east, parking their cars in mm -hmm. Sunnyside and Long Island City, getting on the 7 train. Right. And so our neighborhood's already disproportionately affected by that. Imagine if we had, um, you know, mm. uh, congestion Does the Long pricing. Island Railroad stop there? There is uh, a stop. It does stop in Woodside. Uh, it also stops uh, in Long Island City. Mm -hmm. And I think some people mm -hmm. use it, but as you know, I mean, the vast majority of people mm -hmm. are taking the 7. So you're a great campaigner. I mean, it goes <laughs> along with organizing, right? It, it's hand in hand, same thing. Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, A, I work really hard, and uh, uh, I, I campaign nonstop, and, and I love talking to people, and I believe in, in grassroots organizing. So knocking on doors, you know, meeting people where they're at, talking about the issues that are important to them, uh, and I think having, you know, the, the neighborhood history and, and track record of working on issues that people care about. Um, those things resonate with people, and I think if you genuinely like people, you like talking to them, you know, you kind of get them, then mm -hmm. hopefully they'll see the genuineness so in you. I, I think the council, at least when I was there, broke down people who loved the neighborhood things and the other people who love to come to City Hall mm -hmm. and hang out. <laughs> How do you, ba you balance these things? You bl you're on a lot of committees. I am. I'm on nine. Nine committees. Nine committees. Well, committees. how are you supposed to attend all these committees and still be out in the district? Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I think, you know, if, if, if I'm... Uh, uh, nine committees. Yeah, nine committees. Uh, I definitely favor uh, being in the district and, mm -hmm. and, and love first and foremost, uh, meeting with people in the district and working on the issues that matter in the district. You know, you have to get to City Hall and you have to sort of do that as well. And obviously, nine uh, committees. the yeah. committees will... will they uh, have to meet at least once a month. Right? Correct, correct. Yeah, and some so, of them meet up more often, I guess. And some yeah. of them meet at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, you, you <laughs> sort of bop back and forth a little bit. Um, but I, I think uh, it, it's good in the sense that it keeps me engaged you know, on a wide mm -hmm. variety of issues, uh, all of which affect people who mm -hmm. live in my district. So, you know, I'm on Chair of Cultural Affairs and Libraries. Obviously, we're, we're thrilled with that. On finance, I mean, transportation, health, parks, general welfare, all of those districts. Major committees. Yeah. Um, what's going to happen with the budget? The mayor has proposed a budget. Is the city council now ha having budget hearings? Yes. We are. We started uh, in early March. Uh, I had my first uh, budget hearing last week uh, for cultural affairs and libraries, and of course it's... And what happens in the mayor's budget? How much? How, well... What, what are the proposed cuts? It's pretty dire, as you could imagine. Yeah. I think the most important thing, uh, as you know, 
is that it's very preliminary this year, mm -hmm. particularly preliminary because the state has, no uh, has its own issues to deal with, and and you know we're facing uh, a huge hole, uh, the city from Albany, um, billions of dollars. So we need that situation to resolve itself, uh, hopefully in favor of New York City, uh, before we can have an accurate snapshot of what uh, the executive If you budget were to get like. the same amount of money, pretend there was no hole in the state budget. If you were to get the same amount of money, is there still a hole in the city budget? Uh, yes. Um, I think the, the numbers are, are the huge. Revenues, yeah. yeah, I mean, I just think the numbers are huge. So obviously this is a difficult time to come into uh, yeah. to office and, 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 uh, and chair you know, a committee that's as important to the lives of New Yorkers as the one I chair. Um, you know, but I do think that the council has a very strong track record of defending, you know, cultural right, organizations money, and libraries yeah. if we can find the money. Are libraries so. now open six days a week? They are. And are they threatened with five days Absol a week? Well, they're threatened with, with below four, five more, days five. a week. Uh, you know, we had our first mm -hmm. hearing last week, mm -hmm. and uh, if the the budget that is currently proposed were to take effect, you'd see libraries going down to two and three days a week service. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, sometimes in the budget process, there's uh, rhetoric and, and, you know, doomsday scenarios um, that are portrayed, but they're really never going to happen. Uh, you know, I, I think we're going to have to work really hard to make sure that those things don't happen. Does, are there any figures as to the number of people who have library cards or use the library? Uh, there are, and, and in Queens, for example, uh, I think just under 900,000 people hold library cards in Queens. Of course, the population is a little over 2 million, um, uh, and uh, you know, that's what the census said mm -hmm. last time, so it's probably more like 2.5 mm -hmm. million people in reality. So. We need to continue to do a better job of making sure that everyone who's eligible to have a library card does. But that's still relatively high. It's it's a very yeah. well used and library is that a, system. Is that a a steady number? It people? is. It is pretty steady from people dropping, people coming. Right. You know, there's a you lot of think transition. So in, in a recession, that more people would come. They they have absolutely. I, that's what come. I would think. Huh? Well, you know, yeah. it, it's it's absolutely true that libraries are busier than ever. Mm -hmm. um, seeing just to read uh, the newspapers. Uh, it's absolutely yeah. seniors reading the you newspapers. Need a card. Right, right, yeah. but uh, and using the computers, mm -hmm. so everyone's coming in uh, with people losing jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to get uh, resumes done, learn a little bit about uh, uh, career training and coaching, and the libraries are performing those services. I just very important want to mention that uh, my first bill um, is, uh, I believe, coming to a vote on Thursday, and it's a library card for all bill. So, uh, for example. Uh, about half of the children eligible for library cards don't actually uh, have a library card. So we are uh, 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 working with the DOE, and now the DOE, as a result of the bill that I hope passes on Thursday, um, will uh, distribute library card applications to in students school. in schools oh, in New York City, which is not done. And the fact that half of the kids who can get a library card don't have one is just a shame. Yeah, it is. Do you do English as a second language in libraries? Is that under the li under your committee, or does that go someplace else? Uh, no, it's it's yeah. uh, libraries are performing those services. They have uh, a very large ESOL programs. Do we still programs. have very long waiting lists? They do. The, yeah. They do. I think in Queens they they, they don't even advertise. Yeah. Uh, because so by word of mouth, everyone finds the program. So you're in a different mm -hmm. situation politically in the city council because you're a friend of the speakers mm -hmm. than, than I was. <laughs> I was not a friend of the speakers. <laughs> so it makes a big difference, right? Your I, I, bills come up easier. <laughs> Your committee assignments are greater, but it's at least a progressive speaker. So she's basically on your side. How many do you have you reorgan have you organized within the council with other colleagues? Yes, yeah. I, I think uh, um, very early on, um, you know, we saw some of the new members. Uh, who uh, were elected this past uh, November, and and started talking mm -hmm. amongst ourselves about uh, um, you know working together and, and how we might advance some of the progressive uh, mm -hmm. agenda items that we all uh, care so deeply about, and uh, and we are uh, coming yeah, together yeah. to form a, a, a group of, of progressive members, and I think that's going to be very thirteen good. new members. When I was a new member, there were two of us, Virginia Fields and me. Oh wow. And that was it. I mean, everybody else had been there for 20 years or more, it seemed to me. I don't know. But it, and then the, the following time, more people came in. 
But it makes a huge difference because the role of tradition always used to have a very strong uh, force in the right. council. And yeah. in a way now, tradition's changing and you guys didn't even know what the old eyes were doing, so it's a whole different bag, right? right. Well, I remember, um, you know, being an organizer yeah. when you were in the council <laughs> yeah. and, and seeing some of well, those figures who obviously had extensive paths in the council. And I think with term limits, obviously, that's no longer the case, whereas mm -hmm. now uh, I think the speaker probably is mm -hmm. one of the longest serving members, yes, if not yes, the longest yeah. serving member. Um, and uh, eight years is now a veteran. So it's definitely a different. Uh, Do you think that there will be different change in the term limits? Uh, well, I mean, we'll have to see the what charter, the Charter Revision does Commission Does the council proposes. have any representation on that? Charter Commission? I, I don't, don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think it's so. It's very interesting. Um, so I, we'll have to see what they propose. Yeah. I was always, I mean, there are, the Republicans are always in the minority, although I think they increase their numbers. There's five year, now. Five of them instead of three or four. Right. But a lot of the arguments and a lot of the differences of opinion we are within the party. It's like there are two Democratic parties in a lot of the mm -hmm. areas, and I don't know how that is now, but that's definitely the way it was. Um, I was amazed to see the number of council members that were not opposed on any line this year. I don't remember what it was, but it was more like 17, I think, members had not only the Democratic endorsement, but the right. everybody endorsed wow. it. Now, how I'll never have that. <laughs> right. So how do we have that? Why do we have, fr how many votes did you get? In the general? Yeah. Uh, over 11,000. So that's a lot. That but, was a lot. But there are 140,000 or more people in the district. Correct. So why are we, do you think, so apathetic about local government? That's always driven me crazy. Well, I think people uh, feel uh, uh, disconnected to uh, you know the power structures that uh, uh, have control over their lives, and I think rather than engaging uh, that that process, they 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 pull away and and say this doesn't really represent me. I can't affect this in any way, shape, or yeah. form. And I think one of the reasons that we had uh, some good vote totals in our district is because we went engaged. You know, we mm -hmm. went deep down into the grassroots and sort of mm -hmm. tried to tell people. You know, despite uh, you know some of the the folks who were right against us, you know that we can do this and and we have power. And if we work together and we build an organization and, and we do the right things, then we can claim that power. And I think more and more people need to become convinced that that's a real, genuine it's possibility. It's so funny because City Hall is such a beautiful little building. You, you, you know, you look at it and you think, well, I could go in there, you know, where the front door <laughs> is, you know, you could get in there. It's a little harder, but it's not as hard as it used to be right. under Giuliani. Um, and the district that I represented and that Gail Brewer now represents has always had a very high vote, but sure. it's never really more than 15,000. And this is a very acutely political district. Right. Do you think, and this is my new thing, that we don't teach civics in school anymore? That, that people really don't know how, what, what city government really is, right. even what the state government is, right. and they don't learn about it, and they don't learn that they really could make a difference. Right. Right. Well, I think it's leadership training, you know. Yeah. I was in a, a elementary school, PS78 in Long Island City, last week for Respect for All, which was a really great program that Speaker Quinn uh, and Chancellor Klein implemented. Um, they could use a little bit of that in Washington. Yes, they could, they could. But we'll start in our <laughs> New York City <laughs> public right. schools. And, and uh, I met with the student council um, at PS78, and uh, there are a bunch of, you know, seven, eight, nine-year-olds, and they've, they've been duly elected, and, and I, I talked a little bit about what I do, and I asked if any of them wanted to run for office one day, and, and sure enough, a couple <laughs> seemed particularly interested and keen on the yeah. idea. Uh, and I think we do have to do a better job of engaging young people right. and, and starting uh, early. I think sometimes we're afraid to encourage leadership. You know, we're yeah. encouraged. Well, of course, we're, because it's a challenge. Right. <laughs> right. So I think we have to uh, uh, get over those yeah. fears a little bit and do a better job of, of raising up, you know, leaders who, who are, you know, from the community, can engage the community, and, and they themselves can bring more yeah. people into the process. When you say you're representing the community, I just want it to be known also that you really realize the city is a lot of communities sure. who are also representing their interests. Absolutely, right? yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Now it's one of the it's first things. It's always a hard thing, right? Well, and, and also being being a chair of the, the, mm -hmm. the committee and, and being on the other committees, right. you know, obviously thing. I have, you know, my district, yeah. uh, uh, which I love, and, and, and yet we obviously 
have uh, uh, influence that right. reaches far beyond. One of Mayor Bloomberg's thing is nonpartisan elections. So since he appointed the Charter com Commission, um, I would think that that's going to be one of the recommendations. He tried to make it that, I think, didn't he, by becoming a Republican and then spending <laughs> so much money and always skirting the issue, although he did support Republicans. How do, what do you think about that in this city? Um, have you thought about it? I haven't given it too much thought. I mean, I think uh, that my first reaction is, uh, um, uh, you know, anything that gets more people into the process is a good thing. Um, uh, but having said that, you know, I, I believe uh, uh, in a Democratic and Republican primary system. I, I think that that's um, uh, an appropriate way uh, to engage people. I think, uh, um, you know, despite some of the forces that exist, I think uh, we've proven and others have proven uh, uh, that you can run, uh, yeah. that you can win, and, and that, you know, we can, we can change the face but of government. But we haven't proven the value of the Democratic Party in New York City or even in New York State, have we? <laughs> I mean, it's a non-existent body. I don't mean to drag you into this <laughs> discussion. <laughs> uh, I think we could always do more. <laughs> Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't think that there's, you know, I don't think that there's no Democratic Party yeah. in the city or the state, um, you know, and I think that in Queens, you know, we have a, uh, a, a lot of people who very, feel very strongly about their party yeah, affiliation, do, yeah. and I think that's okay. More on a national basis, don't you think? Well, yeah, in the general population. Yeah. I think there's a major difference, and I think we've all seen it recently in, in watching how the Congress mm. operates, that you can tell a Democrat and a Republican there's a big difference. That's right. What do you think the major issues are facing the city? The budget. But, I mean, what, what else do we need to really pay attention to? Well, I mean, I think, you know, what are the issues that affect people in their everyday lives, you know? And, and I think uh, transportation uh, is so important. Uh, if, if people who are already struggling and already pinched uh, can't get to the job interview, can't get to work, um, you know, then, then we're failing them. Mm -hmm. uh, education, which I, of course, include libraries mm -hmm. uh, and cultural affairs in, which is such an important part of it, um, that's obviously really, really big. And, and I think, you know, uh, allowing people to feel good about the neighborhood that they live in, that they want to continue to live in, obviously uh, affordable uh, housing. Uh, housing is so critical to that um, in terms of protecting renters and making sure that you, they're getting their fair share. Do you share. have a lot of people who are long-term renters in rent-controlled or stabilized apartments? Absolutely. So that ruling of uh, Judge Goodman mm -hmm. uh, would be very helpful to them. There was a who passed that bill, the rent stabilization? I mean, what was that? Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I, Where people who've lived in an apartment longer than nine years, I mm -hmm. think, or something, are subject to a minimum of $45, I think, a month increase, whether, I mean, it's yeah. a ridiculous thing. Yeah. And Judge Goodman ruled in favor of the tenants, and now I think it's on appeal by this. I don't know if it's on appeal by the city or right. Whatever, but well, you know, we had anyway. a situation where you know there was just a, a settlement reached with Vantage, mm -hmm. um, and uh, where you know they were sort of predatory equity has become mm -hmm. a big issue. A lot of buildings getting purchased in Sunnyside, Woodside, even other parts of Queens, and uh, you know, working class folks, a lot of immigrants, um, you know, struggling to make the rent. A big uh, a corporation buys the buildings, want to mm -hmm. turn a profit, okay. and uh, all of a sudden, you know. Uh, rents are going up, MCI abuses, all sorts of things like that. And, and there was a settlement in that case, uh, which I think is a good thing. But, you know, we just need to make sure that we're doing everything to protect uh, people in their apartments and, and allowing people to feel good about uh, their neighborhoods. Yeah. Do you, um, you were for clean elections, so I think you're a strong supporter of campaign finance. Absolutely. Um, and I think there was an average in the in the districts where there were primaries. Mm -hmm. You had four or five, six candidates, right? D is that a is that good? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. No. I mean, I, w I I believe in in public financing um, uh, of elections. Uh, I believe in in you know the matching fund system that we have, and I believe anything that we can do to encourage more people into the process. Um, uh, you know, while obviously running you know you don't want to have that many opponents but yeah. but uh, uh, but the truth is that the more people who run the more people who can be viable the more people are brought into the political, uh, system. The political system and feel 
Uh, I hope they got stay in it once they're in it. Right? Correct, correct. Yeah. And I think, you know, we've, we've seen it, you know, I mean, the truth is that, that with campaign finance reform and term limits, the council has become much more diverse uh, in, in just about well, every actually, way. Actually, it's the first time that the majority of the council are people of color. Correct. I mean, I love it when they say the majority is now, min uh, the minorities are now right. the majority. At some point, we're going to have to change that terminology, right? Right, and that doesn't include uh, uh, some of the members of the LGBT caucus right. uh, who so would who, uh, increase. What do you consider yourselves? You're, I mean, you're still, you break down, don't you, into people of color when it comes to the majority of the minority? Uh, well, I think there's, you know, yeah. a, a Black, Latino, and Asian right. caucus, obviously, right. uh, uh, right. Uh, for those members who can be members. There are now how many members. members that are, are part of the LGBT? Four. Four. Yes, we doubled right. that caucus. And, and 27, I think, are mm -hmm. either Black, black Latino, Hispanic, or Asian. Or Asian. Right. That's Which a I think major is great. change. Right. And major. I think, you know, beyond those, those you know, obvious yeah. uh, uh, demographics, you know, there are the community organizers mm -hmm. and uh, the, the progressives who won election this year. So, uh, you know, I think that's a further shift that we're seeing people who were not necessarily right. in politics or, or working for elected the officials. Machine, right. For the county organizations, which we talk as the machine, but they right. came up through the community. Right. It's People who have been difference. really organizing around right. tenant issues and, you right. know, teachers big and difference. libraries. And those things are really transformative. Well, let's hope. You'll have to come back <laughs> after the, the, the end of your first year and tell us if you're still as hopeful and optimistic. And I'm delighted that you are. And I'm Thank delighted you. that you enjoy yourself. Thank you so much. And I feel safe that you're uh, safer that you guys are in there in the mix. Thank you so much. Thank Ronnie. you, Jimmy Van Breer. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.